Yes, we are now recording, so don't say anything rude. <laughs> As if I would. <laughs> I didn't mean you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So is that all right? Are you good to go now, Tracy? I'm good to go, thank you, yes. Splendid. Brothers and sisters, it's, um, it's 3.36 in the afternoon here in uh, in England. Uh, some of you I know are calling from all sorts of places around the globe. So a very, very warm welcome to, uh, to each and every one of you. Um, this marks a, a really exciting moment. Uh, an exciting moment, I think, uh, on, on three fronts, really. Uh, an exciting moment to, uh, to be giving Sarah Clare a license, which we've been talking about now, Sarah, for um, for a long time, really. Yeah. Um, so it's great to have finally got to that point where we're doing this. Um, but also uh, to Susan for celebrating your uh, your continued and faithful ministry. But at the same time, for both of you. Today, each of you will receive two licenses, uh, just as Tracy has two licenses, because you will be covering not just um, the old North Blackwater group, not just the Tottenham's and Goldhanger and so on, but you'll be covering the whole of the Blackwater parishes, um, which is currently two benefices. And that show something of an exciting coming together and working together across the churches in that part of the area. So it's, um, it's a really, really exciting time for all those reasons. Um, I, I have, I think, muted pretty much, uh, pretty much everyone, but there will be moments when I will, uh, rather daringly suggest that you unmute yourselves to join in uh, some responses. But if you remain muted for the rest of the time, that would be good. Uh, I suggest we just take a few moments just to be still and wherever we are, um, perhaps if you're driving, don't close your eyes. Um, but, uh, but just to be still and to remember that though we are only virtually present with one another, that the living God dwells within us and that he is here. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now it says here that the bishop welcomes those present and reads from the scriptures. So it's a great delight uh, to read to you today. There is an appointed uh, gospel reading for today. And wherever possible, I try and uh, stick to the gospel reading. Uh, and I just want to share one very simple thought after reading this gospel reading to you. You may think that's a very odd gospel reading to have for this particular celebration and this particular licensing um, and indeed it probably is uh, I didn't choose it it's simply the set reading for the day uh, but I think there is something that's worth thinking about in it which I'll explain a bit later the reading comes from Luke chapter 6 verses 27 to 38 and Jesus says but I say to you that listen love your enemies do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? 
for even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over and be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure that you get back now it struck me reading that that sometimes i think we misunderstand what jesus is teaching in that particular passage and i want to focus just on one of those commands that he gives which is when someone strikes you on the right cheek you are to turn the other cheek because I think Jesus is suggesting something which is a bit subversive now uh, I know that uh, particularly in Tolsbury uh, it has a bit of a reputation for brawls and drunken behavior um, or at least it did way back in the past you only have to read the inscription on the font in Tolsbury Church to know that that's the case. And in fact, uh, Tolsbury still boasts in its little square by the church uh, a lockup where uh, people were put to sober up uh, when they were caught drunk during the night. Um, but actually, what is this thing about striking somebody on the right cheek and then turning the cheek? Now, to understand this, you have to look at the mechanics of being hit, uh, because Jesus is quite specific. He is talking about being struck on the right cheek. He makes a particular point of saying the right cheek. So in order to strike somebody on the right cheek, one would have to use one's left hand. But nobody at the time of Jesus would have raised their left hand to anyone. Your right hand was the thing that you did things with. You ate with your right hand. You greeted people with your right hand. Yes, you hit people with your right hand. Your left hand was used really for only one thing. We won't go into it now, but as a result, it was best kept out of the way. So Jesus is, being, is talking about being hit on your right cheek by someone's right hand. Now, that's not a punch. Uh, it's a kind of backhanded slap. Uh, if you're struggling to follow this, please, after the service, uh, find somebody uh, who's not going to take offence and just practice. But it's a kind of like that across their, across their right cheek. Jesus is talking about someone slapping you in the face. Now, a backhanded slap at the time of Jesus was not intended to injure someone so much as to insult them to humiliate them, to degrade them. You didn't slap someone who was equal to you. You slapped someone who was inferior to you. Masters slap their slaves. Parents slap their children. Romans slap the Jews and so on. Now Jesus is saying this to a people who are used to being degraded. They're poor and they're downtrodden. And Jesus says to them, when someone insults you, when someone humiliates you, when someone treats you like this, then turn the other cheek. Because if you turn so that your left cheek is facing your attacker, then their only option is to use their fist and to punch you. But only equals at the time of Jesus fought with fists. If your attacker hits you with their fist, they would be declaring you their equal. 
that simple act of defiance would render the attacker incapable of asserting their dominance. They can no longer humiliate you. They can no longer degrade you and declare you to be of no worth. By turning the other cheek, you are saying, I am a human being just like you, and I refuse to be humiliated any longer. Turning the other cheek is a way of defying your oppressor and asserting your humanity. What's that got to do uh, with the ministry of associate priests uh, in the Blackwater parishes? I do not suggest that you, uh, you necessarily go around inciting violence. But I do think that a crucial part of our ministry, especially in these difficult times, is to affirm and assert people's humanity. It's so important. There's so much that is dehumanizing. Even the fact that I'm talking you to, to, to you today via a computer screen feels somehow less than the kind of human interaction we would want to. And I think part of our ministry, not just as ordained people, but as Christians generally, is to affirm one another's fellow humanity, to connect with people and to restore something of their dignity that life in the 21st century sometimes diminishes. I was at uh, an AGM of a charity yesterday a Christian charity working with the very poorest people in our communities. And uh, we were reflecting on what did it mean for the ministry of that charity to be a Christian ministry. And I suggested that the first thing it meant was that we would ban the term service user. It's a term I hate anyway, but actually it was purely contractual. It's got nothing to do with relationship. It says we are there to provide a service. You are there to use the service. That's it. And I was, I was reflecting, as I said that, on the, the story of the hemorrhaging woman. Uh, and there's a woman who, whose whole fabric and network of relationships had, had just gone because she was perpetually unclean. And Jesus healed her. And then the first word he said to her was, daughter, daughter, your faith has made you whole. And that, that really struck me that the first thing he did was to affirm his relatedness to her. That it was about relationship. He didn't say service user, your faith has made you whole. He said daughter. And I think there's something desperately important at this stage of taking every opportunity that comes our way to affirm the humanity of others and the dignity of others and actually the belovedness of others in all that we do to them. If we do that in our ministries, then I think we'll have done something really very profound and very important. So I now have to ask uh, Susan and Sarah some questions uh, about their ministry, about their call to priesthood. And then uh, after that, I shall say a collect. And then Tracy, you're going to uh, lead us in some prayers and lead us in the Lord's Prayer together. Is that okay? Wonderful. So Sarah and Sue, do you believe that God has called you to this ministry? I believe that God has called me. I believe that God has called me. Sue and Sarah, before you receive these licenses, do you in the presence of God renew your dedication to Christ as a priest in the church of God? I do. I do. Priests are called to work as servants and shepherds among the people to whom they are sent. Will you always set the Good Shepherd before you as a pattern of your calling, caring for the people committed to your charge 
and joining with them in a common witness to the world. By the help of God, I will. By the help of God, I will. Will you preach the word of God, study the Holy Scriptures, and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? By the help of God, I will. By the help of God, I will. Will you celebrate the sacraments of the new covenant, baptizing new Christians and feeding the faithful with Christ's body and blood? By the help of God, I will. By the help of God, I will. And friends and family and church members and others of those who are being ordained, uh, it's your role to support Sarah and Sue in their ministry. Please pray for them, encourage them. Um, when they're a bit cheesed off, listen to their grumblings. Um, but most of all, hold them in your love as they continue in their ministry. And so let us pray. Almighty God, lover of all people and giver of all that is good, hear our prayer for your servants, Sarah and Sue, now called to this ministry. By your Holy Spirit, fill them with love for your people, that they may faithfully preach your word, minister your sacraments and shepherd your flock to the glory of your name through jesus christ our lord amen amen tracy you'll now lead us in prayer let us pray heavenly father we thank you for the calling you have placed on both sarah and sue we thank you for the huge blessing that they have already been to their respective parishes within the Blackwater Benefice. And most of all, we thank you that today they are offering themselves to be licensed to all seven parishes. Anoint them afresh with your Holy Spirit. Give them wisdom, insight and clear guidance as they begin to minister in new churches and continue to minister in familiar ones. Help them to see your vision for this new benefice and reveal to them the particular ministry you have planned for each of them in these par parishes that only they can fulfill. Lord, we pray that you will help all of us who minister alongside Sue and Sarah to support and uphold them in the years to come. Jesus, you told Peter to feed your sheep. Sarah and Sue have been charged by the bishop with the task of serving and shepherding your flock. May they follow your example to the best of their ability, and may they not only feed your sheep by their words, their actions and their love, but may they in turn be fed by the congregations that they serve. We pray your blessing on them both now as they take the first steps on the next part of their journey with you. Amen. 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 And would you join with me now in the words of the Lord's Prayer? And we're using the modern version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, us from evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom power, and the, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Tracy. Beautiful prayers. So, Sarah and the Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. 
led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formula. The 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration that you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Sarah Catherine Jane Clare, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, Susan Mary Godsmark, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I'm holding the Bible uh, that I was given when I was ordained deacon um, by Bishop Stephen in Chelmsford Cathedral. Some of you were at that ordination. I, Sarah Catherine Jane Clare, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Susan Mary Godsmark, do swear that I will faithfully and bear witness and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Sarah Catherine Jane Clare, do swear that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Chelmsford and the area Bishop of Colchester and their successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. I, Susan Mary Godsmark, do swear that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Chelmsford and the area Bishop of Colchester and their successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Wonderful. Now, if I can ask you to each sign the declaration that you have there, and then um, you'll need to show me your signature once you've signed it. That's lovely. Thank you. Terrific. That's lovely. Great. Now, I will uh, sign the corresponding bits of paper here and then sign your licenses. Uh, bear with me while I do this. Normally, there would be music playing or something as an interlude, um, but we don't have that at this stage. I have to say, by the way, that these licenses will look slightly different because they don't have the bishop's seal on them. Because we have an Episcopal vacancy at the moment, we don't have a Lord Bishop of Chelmsford, and therefore the, the licenses do not carry his seal. Uh, they are given as a, as a witnessed deed. Can we send them back when we get a new bishop, a new okay. Lord Bishop of Chelmsford, and get him to add the seal, Bishop Roger? No, they're, they're still as valid. They're absolutely fine. 
Okay. Fair enough. They're worth just as much on the uh, on the open market, you know. <laughs> now, Sarah, if uh, if I come to you first, I, Roger Bishop of Colchester, acting under powers delegated to me by virtue of the Diocese of Chelmsford Area Scheme, nineteen eighty four, as amended by order dated twenty second of November two thousand and eight, and made pursuant to section ten and section 11 of the Diocese Measure 1978, hereby license you, Sarah Catherine Jane Clare, Clerk in Holy Orders, to serve as Associate Priest in the Benefice of North Blackwater Parishes, and as Associate Priest in the Benefice of Great and Little Totem with Goldhanger, within the Diocese of Chelmsford, and I direct that you shall reside in the said benefice unless otherwise agreed by me. In witness whereof, I have executed these presents as a deed this 10th day of September in the year of our Lord 2020. Sarah, receive a share in the ministry which is both yours and mine in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hey, Susan. I, Roger, Bishop of Col Colchester, acting under powers delegated to me by virtue of the Diocese of Chelmsford Area Scheme 1984, as amended by order dated 22nd of November 2008, and made pursuant to Section 10 and Section 11 of the Diocese Measure 1978. Hereby license you, Susan Mary Godsmart, Clark in Holy Orders, to serve until the 10th day of September in the year of our Lord 2020. <clears throat> really short term. That's, that's rather short term. That's up until today. I have just noticed a little problem <laughs> with this that I will amend by hand. Um, this is where I need Michelle. Do you know, we sh it's good that we rehearsed this, isn't it? I now need my pen that I've put down in a safe place. Because I'm going to have to amend this license. Um, this license isn't correct. What's the, the end point of Susan's license? Because it says 2020 here. Three years time. Three years time. I think so. Is that right? 2020. It would be two years. Normally it's two years, I think. Is it? I'm sorry. I thought it was three. No, I think so. I'm going to change that. 2022. Because I've signed it, it doesn't matter that I change it. And then when you do a copy, we'll just need to alert Melanie to that as well. Yeah. Great. There we are. Yours, yours is worth even more on the open market because it, um, <laughs> it has an amendment. <laughs> right, we'll try that again. Uh, I, Roger, Bishop of Colchester, acting under powers delegated to me by virtue of the Diocese of Chelmsford Area Scheme 1984, as amended by order dated 22nd of November 2008, and made pursuant to section 10 and section 11 of the Diocese Measure 1978, hereby license you, Susan Mary Godsmark, Clerk in Holy Orders, to serve until the 10th day of September in the year of our Lord 2022, as Associate Priest in the Benefice of North Blackwater Parishes, and as Associate Priest in the Benefice of Great and Little Totten with Goldhanger, within the Diocese of Chelmsford, and I direct that you shall reside in the said benefices unless otherwise agreed by me. In witness whereof, I have executed these presents as a deed in this 10th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2020. Susan, receive a share in the ministry which is both yours and mine in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Excellent. Uh, people of the Blackwater 
will sometime be benefice and uh, friends, family and supporters of Sarah and of Sue, uh, I present your new associate priests. Do please uh, whoop, cheer, unmute yourselves, clap, whatever. <laughs> Oh, there's a dog. <laughs> sure, I didn't say bar. Sure, I didn't say bar. <laughs> Congratulations, Sarah. Congratulations, Sarah. Thanks, Mandy. Thanks, Mandy. You next. You next. Yeah. Well done, Sue. Well done, Sue. Well done, Sarah. Yeah, well done, Sarah. Well done, Sarah. Thanks, bro. Congratulations, Congratulations to both. To both. No, Hello. Congratulations, Sarah. And Sue, of course. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. I've just muted you all, um, but then afterwards, uh, because I've made Tracy the co host, I can leave you to all chat and mingle and do whatever you're going to do afterwards and have conversations. Um, but I'm just going to pray for God's blessing uh, on Sarah, on Sue. Uh, on their ministry together and the ministry of the whole ministry team across those parishes uh, and uh, for God's blessing on each one of you. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will and work in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Sarah, so congratulations. Uh, really, really good to celebrate today with you. I'm sorry that it is in this virtual form that we do so the the wine is never quite so good when it's not shared with others but do celebrate uh, you'll need to unmute yourselves and have as many conversations as possible uh, with the people who are here some of whom I know have joined you from afar and um, and just enjoy uh, this time together Thank you very much, Bishop Roger. We do appreciate very much you being here with us this afternoon and licensing us both. It's a pleasure. Susan, you'll need to unmute yourself, I think, to join in the conversation. It's on my, uh, right. Can you hear me now? I can. Good. Microphone can't be that bad then. No. <laughs> Lovely. What a special moment. What a special moment. It's good to see you, Sarah. Mm. Thank you, Rita.